um, graphic designer, um, entrepreneur. So for those of you that are interested in entrepreneurship, um, that might be, you know, you might start thinking of questions um, that you have to ask of her. Um, and activist, um, originally born in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Tree kind of currently has established her practice in um, Tulsa. Uh, she has a um, BA in kind of journalism with a minor in Africana studies from OU, um, and has kind of participated in numerous exhibitions. Um, I'm going to have far too many to kind of recount here, um, in kind of nationally. So from you know Washington D.C. Um, to uh, Maryland to Philadelphia. Know, here in Oklahoma, um, really kind of running um, the kind of gamut of different venues. Um, the um, tree is also the recipient of um, several kind of prestigious fellowships, um, including um, one that um, kind of supported her work in Ghana. Uh, and um, so, kind of without further ado. Let me go ahead and welcome Don. And Don, we do have a microphone. Okay. If, um, if you want to use that, you can have a do a call mic, um, or just if you turn that on. Thank you for the introduction. So, um, yeah, so I have an exhibition that's been running for going on two months uh, in the whole gallery. So I'm an abstract artist. I'm a painter. I paint on wood. So the pieces you'll see will be on wood. I use latex, acrylic, aerosol, found objects, anything from bone, feathers, uh, branches I've used before. So uh, I am 37 years old, and I've been painting since I was seven. And so that's been 30 years. And I suppose I want to talk about that particular series. It's called The Frequency of Fear. So by a raise of hands, uh, does anybody, has anybody ever experienced fear in their life? That was almost everybody. So uh, fear itself is not biased in terms of race, right? So I wanted to kind of uh, express that uh, in particular, our current environment in America. There's a lot of fear-based, uh, I would say, news, propaganda, actions, period. So I wanted to really focus more so on the slight genocide that's happening between amongst African Americans in, in America, right? So are you all aware of that at all? By a raise of hands. Okay. I'm not gonna choose any one of you, but so I wanted to focus on that, and I did a seven-part series based off of the emotions I felt like inspired this calamity and tragedies, horrific uh, events that are happening in African Americans' lives, in particular. So I started with fear, and so the first piece really. It's called Fear Identified. So you can look at why people who are supposed to protect us are actually killing us. So I identify that as fear. So, and it starts out with the thought process that I had a friend who delivers papers, newspapers in Maryland. And he's been hit by deer on three different occasions. So I was wondering like, what is that exactly? Uh, does the deer see him? Is the deer fearful of him? Uh, is he fearful of the deer? And the deer identifies that frequency. Um, so that's where the frequency of fear came from, right? And then I correlated that with our present environment. So that, was, uh, that one has some deer at the bottom, and then it has, I have a f best friend that, has, that works at a hospital. So she gave me heart rhythms. So I, get, I put very, very rapid heart rhythms on that, and that's where the mixed media can come from. And so that one is red. I don't have pictures of that one, but uh, it's red, yellow, there's green in there as well, but you can feel 
I, I would say. That's what I try to do is express emotion through my pieces. Uh, I don't want to give you something to actually see, but to more self-feel. So fear is the first one. And then what usually happens after you identify the fear? And I concluded death or injury. So the next one is called death. And so I didn't want to just be so morbid about it. I also wanted to depict the sky and that element of an underworld in terms of, you know, there's obvious goodness in this world, but there's obviously, you know, uh, deathly factors that exist uh, when it comes to our historical reference as slaves, even, uh, as well as indentured servants. And then there's form, the forms of slavery right now as, as we speak. So that was the second one. And I actually depicted more so of a face on that one. So to kind of, you know, some people actually need visuals instead of just the abstract perspective. So I wanted to appease the audience just a little bit. And someone actually, uh, a friend of mine was, she said, well, it looks like a self-portrait almost. And I said, well, I do see the death of every African-American as myself as well. And so I don't know if you are familiar with Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat, but he expressed the same. He was walking out of a gallery opening one night. He sold quite a few paintings that night, millions, maybe thousands, thousands of dollars of paintings. And one of his friends who looked just like him was shot and killed that night. So he saw himself oh, I'm, I'm in the midst of all these white folk selling all these paintings, but yet my peers are getting shot on the street. So, of course, I see myself and every African-American who's been shot. We have Terrence Crutcher in Tulsa and too many more to name. So that was that one. And then mourning is the third one. So we must mourn that death. Usually you have a funeral, you have a wake. So, that's not necessarily self-explanatory, but we have that one. And there's a gold hand reaching down in that one, which represents, I would say, God uh, reaching down in the underlife, underworld. The next one was rage. So, I mean, we can look at even reference of history, Martin Luther King, when he was assassinated. Every city in America basically went under unrest and was on fire. So. That was pretty powerful. I had a lot of uh, detox moment creating that one. So it's orange, it's red, and that one as well has rapid uh, heartbeats on that one as well. And then uh, within each, not each one of them, but many of them, I have this bird kind of depicted as an angel. So you might want to check that out if you haven't. Uh, justice or the lack thereof is the next one. So. Uh, we already know getting a, a chunk of change for death is not justice. Uh, we also know that the fight that it goes into actually seeking justice is pretty heavy for each family. So I wanted to depict that. Then we have breakthrough. So that one's pretty light and bright. It's white, it's glittery, it's got stars on it, it's got this peace symbol. So I wanted to depict what it feels like to have to rise up out of that pain and move forward, right? So, because there's trauma everywhere. And if we really, if anything, focus on it, we wouldn't get up, you know? We'd be mad, we'd probably be killing everybody out here in these streets, to be honest. But the African-American race has not done that as a whole. So, I want to depict breakthrough. I also think about Trayvon Martin's parents, who at some point have to, had to get up and get outside of that self-loathing in order to get up and be an activist and educate even our, my brothers and sisters on how to deal with this continual murder of our people, right? And then love is the last one. The heart chakra is green. So I wanted to depict that green, not something, I would say more uh, pink or red. I didn't want to depict that. I wanted to depict a deeper meaning. So the heart chakra, being in touch with your heart, uh, I feel as if if you do that, uh, you're not as fearful, you know? You learn your purpose, you learn what you actually should be doing in this world. You're not envious, you're not jealous. 
Uh, many of these things actually go away once you identify love. So I have a large feathers on that one. And the heart rhythm is the most normal on that one. So in a nutshell, that's what those pieces are. Uh, I use um, different mediums, uh, epoxy on the top to kind of uh, add another medium to it. Not necessarily to seal it, but to add another medium in a dimension of emotion. Uh, yeah. And so I want to complete that in terms of that series. And I also created another series just recently called the Greenwood Joy Experience. And so that was a focus during the centennial, 100 years since the massacre that occurred here in Tulsa. So I wanted to bring a different spirit to the space. Even with that piece, it looks, the ending emotion is, is love. It's not getting caught up in the pain itself, but moving and evolving out of that. So the Green With Joy experience is all to bring another spirit of joy but I also wanted to focus. So those pieces were very bright, very bright, and glittery. So it depicted laughter, dance, uh, saying hello to your neighbor and to yourself, even. And uh, what else do we have? Pride, to have pride in yourself every day. So, and then I did a film, a 50 minute film that depicted what joy would actually look like and so ownership spiritual healing and financial payback were elements inside of that that would allow us to get to that joy right it's the only way you know that i felt like was a way to get to that so i depicted that in a film so i'm also a videographer as well so and then there's a video of me in the woods pseudo painting you know those pieces if you want to check that out so at this time, I mean, I have more to say, but does anybody have any questions about that series itself or how I created them, et cetera? Okay. Do you mind telling us a little bit about your process for the painting? Sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, this frequency of fear was a, a very heavy, I mean, it was that, it, I created this over a two years time period, right? So I looked at, I mean, the environment's heavy itself. So that was in my heart, that was on my mind. So I actually took, uh, I started writing on my wall and in terms of like uh, in my studio, just the emotions I felt were identified with the elements that went into killing us, right? And so a couple of them changed and shifted, but I identified those seven emotions first, you know? And then I went to the wood. So I paint on wood, like I said. So then I chose a, a, the size of the wood, you know, which were are pretty big, you've seen. And I then, so I went off of that, the size itself. Because sometimes I'll create small pieces, sometimes they're medium, sometimes they're large. This is not the largest I've created, but it's pretty large especially carrying it. I have to think about that too, but I try not to let that, you know, deter me. So, and then I started painting fear and what that actually looks like. I thought about my friend, there's three, there's two deer on the piece. And so I thought about him getting hit by the deer. And then the freak, like the actual emotion inside of a person, right? So I go there and then when I created a, a, a death, I had to stop painting for a little bit, you know, to let it, because I, I expressed a lot of emotion on the piece. Uh, and then after I did Rage, though, I think the, the process was pretty quick. And then, because splattering of the paint, if you actually look at the piece, like I'm outside and I'm splattering the paint and, you know, I'm not killing anybody, I'm just painting, you know. I'm not throwing fire, I'm painting. But it was uh, very detoxing. You know, just like if somebody were to go and, you know, they have those places where you can just damage stuff, you know, like hit cars and stuff, and maybe even box, you know, that's a way to express yourself. So that's what that piece was for me. And uh, it took a while to complete love, actually. I kept on adding to it. So 
Yeah, I paint on the ground. So I label it down and then I choose my colors, you know, I go from there. Um, oftentimes I might get on my knees, like get close to the painting. Uh, I took them outside to take photos of them. And then when I completed them, I took them outside, but usually I'll paint like two or three inside the space and they have to dry. So I can't just focus on one, you know, the whole time. That's a slow process. Um, I've painted outside on the balcony. I've painted uh, in nature in a sense, but for the most part, I painted my studio. I have to open the door because the aerosol can get pretty you know, big, I'm not trying to get high, um, but because that's not the best eye, you know. <laughs> but um, I think I just go with my, how my spirit is flowing, you know, this is like, it's a spiritual process. So by the time I finished, I felt very good about the pieces. And this is the first time they're actually being uh, exhibited in one space, I, I exhibited three in one exhibition that I did in Oklahoma City, but this is the first time. And I created it knowing I wanted them to be in a gallery space. So. Yeah. Cool. What cool expenses does the COVID happen to like buy wood for your pieces? Well, I find a lot of my wood actually. Uh, and that now people know I paint on wood, so they'll give me a call and be like, hey, I found some wood. But when I lived in D.C., I lived in D.C. for eight years and Baltimore for two. It was pretty easy to find wood. Uh, yeah, like I would walk through the alleys and I would find wood like that, you know, or somebody was throwing out wood. Now, when I was in Ghana, like I spent five months in Ghana doing an artist residency. It's not, they use everything, like literally, to live, to, you know, they just use everything. So I had to go buy wood there but for the most part you know i find it um the fence i did on my house like that costs more than the wood you know i uh find for canvas and then you know when i think about the pricing of it all it can ex you know like 20 bucks for some wood is nothing you know but to save costs <laughs> early early on in my art career finding the wood was like golden Uh, it's a feeling, you know, and then also how um, important I feel the pieces, you know, to even to me. I try to like really detach from the piece, but how can I, you know? But these pieces are probably some of my highest price pieces only because of the emotion and the time I felt like I put into it. Um, I don't measure it and, you know calculate per square foot or anything like that. Maybe when I do murals, you know, I do that, but not for my interpretive graph or abstract pieces, no. Yeah. Yes. So you said that when you, you finished this piece, you feel good about it, but the two questions, how do you, how do you know when, when it's finished? Do you ever feel like after some time has passed, like you need to go back um, and add? And then my other question, what are some of um, the other themes that you've like explored over your 30 year career? Okay. Uh, you don't have to answer all of them. <laughs> let's start with the last one and then you can. Okay, themes. Uh, this, like I said, the last one was joy. This one that I'm creating some pieces now and it's basically looking at like space and galactic and you know, I just wanted to feel free uh with the sky you know so I'm, I'm reflecting on that in the sun as well you know uh i picked up some stamps from the, the post office and they had all these different color suns and i was like oh this is dope <laughs> and my name is dawn and so i focus on the sun you know so uh I, when i went to ghana i focused on the social economic and political atmosphere so i looked at the lack of water source, uh, electricity, the mining for gold. So I went pretty deep and that was heavy. And then 
when I came back, I focused on self-love. And so I created some pieces that looked at my personal self. So one is called Lioness. So I felt like, you know, I have Lioness spirit. So that came out. I'm somewhat spiritual, I am, you know. I hike all the time, I'm in nature. I pray, you know. So I wanted to express that in the pieces, but with the, a cultural sense as well in terms of the things I learned when I was in Ghana. Um, and before that, I don't even think I was really focused on theories or like a particular emotion. I've looked at Egyptian hieroglyphs before, so I have some pieces about that. But, uh, so pieces that like sold, are, I mean, in the past, like when I was very more, in terms of, as an entrepreneur, I worked at a nonprofit before I was an entrepreneur. So I really couldn't control a lot of the elements in my life. So my pieces were a lot more controlled, like in terms of the drip, like I would move them meticulously, wait for them to dry. It kind of looked like a, a logic board or a motherboard. Um, yeah, so what was the other question? Yeah, it's got to be a feeling. Because it's not like I'm drawing a, I mean, I do draw, you know, or paint more meticulously, you know. But for the most part, it's a feeling. Like, I can't just look at the face and say, oh, this looks about done, you know. Like, the eyes are perfect, the lips are perfect. No. It's more of a, you know, this color feels right on this side. I like to use contrast in the pieces and balance. So... So yeah, like the love piece, it took a while to get there. Cause I didn't feel like it had enough depth to it. So I kept on adding to it. But then I never, if you listen to Jackson Pollock, if you are aware of who he is, he talks about his art, which I think that's why I fell in love with him. Cause it's like, oh, this is a splutter paint. But when he would talk about it, it was much deeper. So you talk about not making any mistakes, every single piece of paint is supposed to be there, you know? So that helped me with my process. I know some artists, they never exhibit this stuff. I mean, they're just too OCD or something. But, you know, I sell work. I don't, ju I didn't study it. Uh, they would consider me a folk artist, like a self-taught artist. But yeah, it's a feeling, more so. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Um, So I published a book, uh, I'm a graphic artist, so as well. And so I published a book about the Tulsa massacre, so before, during, and after. So I go around to organizations, universities, galleries, and actually uh, story tell um, based off of this. So you all can check this out. And then um, I have a picture, the mayor has a copy. Uh, the senator, Senator Matthews has a copy. It's in Tulsa Public Schools. So, you know, in terms of being the change you want to see, a lot of times, I, I mean, I've adopted that as a mantra. You know, there's a lot of things in this world that we can't necessarily, you know, just change overnight. But if you want to make some change, you know, a lot of times it's you having to make that change. So that's why I wrote a book. And it has pictures in it, so it's not so boring. Um, <laughs> And then I also wanted to show how, you know, I can draw as well. You know, Basquiat would be like, well, I can draw. Too. You know. So this is uh, Dr. Colonel West. He actually is from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, I didn't know he moved on to a seminary. Harvard wouldn't give him tenure, so he went to a seminary to teach. And so for all those who um, ask me a question, I have some postcards for you. Does anybody else have a question? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and y'all can reach me. Uh, my Instagram is Underground Tree. Uh, my Facebook is Underground Tree Studios. Mm, utreep.com is my website. And then uh, I'm throwing a festival for the young people. So if anybody wants to volunteer, uh, it's called the Evergreen Youth Arts Festival. It's October 30th. So feel free. Thank you.
things in the slides, but I'll add the um, I'll add the um, social media info uh, to that so that you can um, you can like, follow, and subscribe. <laughs>